actually shoot. Yeah, so we've got the John Morant situation, which is like, I I, I think when it comes to sports cards, here's kind of my thoughts. Here, my thoughts on Ja from a sports card perspective is that like, if you really look at what, if you look at his potential, I guess, and then you look at what's happened over the past like month, it really doesn't. It, it it seems like it doesn't make sense. Like, it seems like maybe he got. I don't because like I've been watching you know first take or whatever, and they're talking about like how I don't know. There's so many different takes on this. And I don't think necessarily the right take is that he. I don't think the right take is that he is a bad person. Like, I think he maybe has some stuff that he's trying to figure out. Um, but I, so they, they just concluded the investigation. Um, and that's, I mean, that's obviously, that's a good thing. I think that they found that there wasn't really anything to go off of. So, but John Moran's going to miss the next four games and then remain away from the team. So we'll see what happens after that. I think every story that's kind of coming out about this situation, like almost is where it keeps getting worse. Like it keeps, it seemingly keeps getting worse and worse. Uh, like I think there was a story about how they had like a players only meeting. And after the players only meeting, that's when he went out to the club. And then that's when the thing with the gun happened, which, you know, I, it, that's just, there's a lot there. I think there's a, there's a lot of speculation and I don't know. I don't think jaw has really, come out in front of a camera because I think that there is a difference between saying something and putting a statement out on Twitter and putting like putting yourself out there in front of a camera because like the other thing is like there's a, there's been a bunch of stories this year about him with like the weapons so it's like at what point like I, I don't know it's really just it just seems so like odd it don't it doesn't nothing it doesn't really make sense like how all of this happened because like i mean at least from my knowledge i don't think there was anything leading up to this point like leading up to this season i can't remember any story of like jaw acting out and i mean how it affects sports cards in, in general i think like you look at and i hate I, I do you know i i it's such a strange situation that i almost don't like comparing it to sports cards in a way because it's like at what point does it become does a real life situation with a player who's clearly in distress because no one acts like this if they're not in some sort of distress or if something's not wrong in my opinion i guess i'm not like you know a, a uh, philosopher that's not the word that i'm really looking for but like i'm not somebody who's judging him necessarily but like as a, someone who you know talks about sports cards like this is sort of how you know, it goes like there's stories like this. And with this one specifically, you know, it just unfortunately happens that it was, it had something to do with a weapon. Like it really just shows kind of the volatility in investing in sports in general, like whether you are, um, I don't necessarily think, you know, if you're investing in the team, like if you're a team owner, I don't think it, I, I like, I think if you are, I guess, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, maybe even if you're a team owner, for example, like if you're the owner of the Grizzlies, you know, you are the value of your team probably shifts pretty dramatically. You know, I don't think necessarily the Grizzlies owner was looking to sell the team anytime soon, you know, especially when you have a play, especially when you had a player, you have a player like John Morant, but like you look at that, you, you look at that team a lot differently now and you look at maybe jaw as a really significantly different player or a different person now because of all of these things. And, you know, I, I think I've heard the take, like hopefully down the road, like I think Jalen Rose kind of talked about this too. Like you've heard the, t I've heard the take a couple times. It's like, hopefully down the road, this is just like a blip on the radar. Like, remember, you know, he, he had that like six month period where he just was like, you know, for whatever reason, after, you know, he signs his big contract, he, he unfortunately gets involved in something that he shouldn't, um, you know, that's hope I'm, that's what that's, that's best case scenario. I think that's, you know, if you are, if you're a fan of the NBA, if you're a fan of John Moran, you got to hope that that's, that's best case scenario for this, this situation, because like, it, it, it just, if, if we get to a point where John Morant, you know, does something, and this is kind of the other thing, like, I, I don't necessarily know, you know, the, what the NBA culture is like. Like, I don't know 
if this is just maybe part of NBA culture, I don't, I can't imagine that it is, but either way, like if you're messing around with a weapon, like now you're putting your, I think you're putting yourself at risk in my opinion, like, and not necessarily having the weapon is putting yourself at risk, but like having the weapon and showing people that you have the weapon, I think is you're putting yourself at risk at that point, because there are people who are desperate and there are people who, if, if, if they, if they know that you have a gun, they may look at you a certain way. Like if they see you on the street or if they, you know, for for whatever, like it's just, it's unfortunate. And when it comes to sports cards, I think it just shows that like the investment in players, especially young players. And I mean, you could look at it and say like, you know, the, the market itself um, for young players, this, this is, these are types of catalysts. Unfortunately, it's probably a negative catalyst. Like, unfortunately he, there's, there's probably, uh, you know, bad um, repercussions from this type of situation. Um, but I think overall, like the, if you're investing in sports cards or these types of players, um, younger players, then you're going to run the risk of like something like this happening where the, the market is more going to affect cards of players like a Jordan or, you know, a retired players. I mean, I even think LeBron at this point is probably in that conversation. Like there's no, um, there's nothing really that could happen uh, in my opinion that would really, you know, outside of something catastrophic, you know, but like, there's nothing really that I think that could happen other than sort of um, the market determining, like once, once LeBron retires, once he gets to the hall of fame, obviously those are probably going to affect his cards, but like nobody is looking at LeBron differently as a player um, now in his career than they have throughout his career. Like with John Moran, like, I don't know, unfortunately, like this may be something that people talk about for the rest of his career, you know, we don't know, like we, this could be something, unfortunately, that follows him, like it could affect his future contracts, it could affect, he could get suspended, and that could then lead him down even a more dangerous path of, I don't know, like I said, this is, this is such a, it's such a delicate situation, unfortunately, that like, we don't know the reasons why John Rand is doing this, like, you know, you wish you could look at it and be like, well, just don't, you know, but it's like, I don't know, like, it's probably not that easy. And I, like I said, when I'm um, comparing it with sports cards, I guess, unfortunately, you got to look at it. And I don't know if it's going to affect car affect his cards significantly. I mean, I think jaw is unfortunately too in sort of a in a uh, market, I guess you could call it he's in in sort of a um, a time period of cards in a time period of cards where, you know, it's, there's just a lot of them. And I think the, it could affect card values long-term. And I think, I think that the era we're looking at now, like, I don't know if I've talked about this on, previous podcasts or anywhere else, but like, I think what you may or may not see from this era of cards is like, there's going to be a shift in what I think the investable, I'm going to using investable in quotations, but like the investable cards in the future is going to be like, I think if you're looking at like a 2012 to 2017 rookie, like if you're looking at like a, uh, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Anthony Davis, uh, Damian Lillard, all the way up to a Jason Tatum, uh, you know, Lonzo Ball, I guess, if he ever comes back. A Markel Fultz, I mean, he's kind of had a little bit of a comeback, which I think is sort of interesting. Uh, you, that's where you're going to see Prism as probably like that main card that you really want to be buying. But if you are looking at like, I even think that like the Luca Prism card is not going to be the best card you want to look into if you're looking to, you know, invest in that type of player. Like, I still think it's a little bit early to I think we're past the point where you can just buy any card and see the value increase. Like, I think you have to be more careful on which cards you're buying. Uh, and that could be which player, which set, um, you, you, if you want to take risks, I think it's worth taking risks. Like if you think that there's a set 
you know, that is all numbered. Like I think, um, I think it's absolute football. I'm pretty sure it's either absolute or certified. Like the first set that comes out for rookies, I actually think is a decent set because all of the base cards are numbered. So like, if you're looking at, um, if you're looking at like a Joe Burrow or you're looking at a Trevor Lawrence, I think that those cards are going to be better than if you're looking at like their prism card, unfortunately, because I think the print run increased pretty significantly. So I think when you are looking into different sets that you may want to buy and with John, I think this is an example, like off the top of my head, I think you would want to look at like some sort of numbered set. Like, I don't know if prism is really going to be, go-to set that you want to look into in the future. Like it could be like, you could use it as a statistic, I think, because that's another thing with sports cards that I think is really interesting is like, there's so many different statistics and there's so many different ways you can, there's so many different ways you can take a set or a number of different sets and use the data from those specific sales, I think, because like prism Prism will always be a set that sells. That's maybe one thing that I think like I, when it comes to value and long-term value, I don't know necessarily if it's going to be one that you should look into, but if you're looking to pick up like a set, um, like if you can, if you, for example, like if you go to a card show or something and you see that there's a job prism or Zion or Lamello or Luca or whatever, and you know what the price is at the current moment. And hypothetically you can buy it at maybe a little bit of a discounted price. Like if you can get it at like, I don't know, a 20, 30% discount somehow, and then flip it, you can flip those cards probably pretty quickly where, you know, a national treasures, for example, it's going to be a little bit harder because there probably aren't, you know, for just for that example, there's only 99 of those national treasures RPA. So it's like, sure, there may be, there's going to be those 99 cards, but also there may be less buyers because of the price of that card. So it's like, I think w when you're looking at this era, so I think, I think that this era is probably going to be, like, like, for example, like when you talk about the junk wax era, there's like dates that people look at. I think it's like 87 or 86 to like 93, I think are the dates. I think we're probably going to see like a 2018 to let's say, I mean, I think it's probably going to be when Fnatic, it's going to be the a year or two after Fnatic starts producing these products because Panini is probably going to keep releasing these sets and they're not going to stop because it's just, it's a way for them to, it's a way for them. They're trying to make money before that they lose all the licenses, unfortunately. And that's just, um, you know, that's just the scenario we're at at this point, unfortunately with, with basketball and football too. I think, I think the print, if I, I, I don't know if, if it's a fact, but I, I think that the football print runs are probably a little bit lower than the basketball print runs. Um, I think if you look at a lot of, uh, if you look at population reports, I don't know off the top of my head, but I have a I have a feeling that they're, the population for football is probably a little bit lower than, is probably a little bit lower than basketball. Um, and what, like I said, I think the the era we're in now is probably going to be like twenty eighteen to, I think that I think it could be like twenty. 25 2026 20, ish like we'll see down the road if if we ever get any type of numbers on print runs which i don't necessarily think we will but i think if we sh if, as we shift from tops making basketball and football to i mean from panini making basketball and football to tops making basketball and football i think that there will be a little bit more transparency on it like i know that there is a formula that I think like I think it's Scotty B cards who's on YouTube he does a great job on um on the print runs and stuff along those lines so I would definitely for for tops like he he does a lot of baseball card stuff so like his baseball card analysis in my opinion is really good and I think he does a good job at he does a good job at uh, kind of putting together the numbers based on how what the um the numbers based on the odds on the back of the packs of how many of these cards there potentially are. Uh, so, you know, 
with like a jaw with Zion. I mean, Zion's even another example of a player who like it should have, like, I don't know where Zion ends up at the end of his career um, for a, obviously a bunch of different reasons. Obviously injuries is going to be different for Zion compared to jaw, but it's like Zion when he's on the court is still one of the most impactful players. Um, and I think if you look at overall his impact for the, uh, for the Pelicans, like the Pelicans, I think with Zion could be like a contender for like a top four, top six, probably top four. I mean, he, he, they could potentially compete for the conference finals. I think the Western conference is sort of um, in an interesting spot where, you know, you have the Warriors. I think the Warriors will always be the Warriors until like the Steph Curry still, st- until Steph Curry retires. I think the Warriors will always be like contending for the, Western Conference Finals. Obviously, the Suns just traded for Kevin Durant. I think you have the Mavericks who just traded for Kyrie, but I don't necessarily love Kyrie, so we'll see how that trade kind of turns out anyways. But, like, I think that the – and, I mean, the the Memphis Grizzlies, I mean, they were a team that probably could have competed for, like, a top, you know, a Western Conference Final spot. I think that the Pelicans are another one of those teams that, like, if Zion can stay healthy, I guess. And I don't necessarily know – how he like I don't know how you how, what to do here I don't know what the what the situation is like I don't know how you do it but like they're definitely a team in my opinion that if he stays healthy that they could make a little bit of a run like um but I think Zion and Ja for example like their their upside is pretty high but their downside is also zero you know but like if you look at like I mean, I think even Luca is sort of in a little bit of a different conversation. I think Tatum is maybe in a little bit of a different conversation. Like, I don't think Tatum or Luca are in the conversation that you look at and say, well, their cards could go to zero because of, for a n- number of reasons, like Zion could have just injuries throughout his whole entire career and his cards could be eventually like, they'll, it'll be the biggest what if in all of cards. Like, Ja, like, I don't know if he doesn't figure this this kind of situation out his kind of his play could hinder like he could potentially all and I think also he's sort of in the injury conversation like he has had some scary almost of career altering injuries because he's such an explosive player like I think he he has these flashy dunks when he's playing but I think that also can lead to that can also lead to injuries because he's also very athletic and he's probably more athletic than a lot of players in the league. So he's going to try and he probably knows this. So he's going to try and go out and make plays that help his team, but are also maybe a little bit more on the dangerous side. So like, I don't know, maybe injuries could be another reason where, you know, Ja gets into this situation where, you know, maybe he unfortunately sustain some injuries or like, I don't know, God forbid, like he doesn't figure this thing out. Like this thing with the weapons, like if, if he doesn't take a step back and realize that he, he like, he's the, he's the player that he should be. He, he could be the face of the league. Like he could be, he could be more, he could be a more important player than Luca. He could be a more important player than Zion. Like he could be the next face of the league. Like, that's where I, I wish, I guess you never know like who, and I think it's, it's kind of sort of the situation where it's like, he's, he's so good. And he's been this, maybe he's been this good his whole entire life that it's like, it's probably hard for someone to sit him down and be like, Hey dude, can you like stop doing this? Because like for him, he's probably like, well, doing all these things means that I can be good on the basketball court. That may be his mindset, unfortunately, like who really knows. So like I said, I'll, I'll finish up this point here. I hope that he f- can figure it out. I hope that he can look at this scenario. I hope that someone can reach out to him. I hope someone maybe in the league or someone can get through to his head that like, just like don't stop doing this because like you don't have to, like you can be the face of the league, like just be the face. I I don't know. And I mean, maybe it's a thing where it's like, he doesn't want to be the face of the league. Maybe he wants to be like a, I don't know, like a Kawhi Leonard who is, you know, if Kawhi Leonard, I guess if he maybe had a little bit more personality and maybe wasn't as hurt all the time either, he could be, he would be in the conversation every single year as like a top one or two player. I don't know. So I guess we'll see. 
Um, you know, like I said, the upside for John Morant is, you know, he goes down as face of the league all time. Great. The downside is that he unfortunately can't figure out this situation and he just stops kind of, he just continues down a path that I don't think he really needs to go down, unfortunately. 